got us where we were and what we've done this season and have been so instrumental in the success of Michigan basketball for the last four years. And that's Jimmy King on my right and Ray Jackson far left and, and the heart and soul of the future of Michigan basketball on my immediate left and Maurice. So this is not how we scripted it. Uh, we had planned on playing on Saturday, but things don't always go the way you want them to. Uh, congratulations are in order from our end to Western Kentucky, who it looked like we had a, a, a comfortable lead with seven, eight minutes to go, and, and we're not able to hold on. The three-pointer with nine seconds to go was uh, obviously uh, uh, huge, and it kind of took the, took the life out of us a little bit, and we never were able to crawl back in in the overtime. It seemed like everything we shot rolled out and rolled in, or rolled in and rolled out, and, and they just uh, controlled the whole overtime session. Uh, but what I want to do here today is just let everybody know that uh, Michigan basketball will continue to prosper. Uh, Ray and Jimmy set a very high standard for, for the group to, to measure up to, and that's our challenge now. Uh, we, we feel terrible that we're not going to continue on, but uh, we're not. And uh, we'll watch it like everybody else, or almost everybody else, from, from a distance and think what could have been, but what's not going to be. Uh, Western Kentucky played hard. They played very well. Uh, they hurt us with dribble penetration, and uh, they got into a big-time role in the last seven minutes, and we you know, were not able to, to hang in and fight them off like we've done in the past. Questions for the student athletes first, please. Give me a rank. Can you just talk about what was going through your minds as it was winding down in the overtime? I wasn't really just thinking about losing the game, you know. That's all I can really say. I mean, it really hasn't hit me that we do playing in Michigan. The only thing I'm feeling right now is just, you know, losing this game, this first round game, and not moving on. Other than that, that's my only concern and my only thoughts right now. Uh, excuse me, could you repeat the question? Was that, could you? Yeah, can you just talk what was going through your mind as the, in final seconds in overtime when it was winding down? Um, really, uh, I was just um, thinking of a way um, that we could come back. And I, when it, uh, it wasn't over, you know, we still could, had a chance to come back. But the last, the last uh, few seconds, um, I was just thinking of... Uh, you know, uh, what we had, and uh, we let slip away. But, uh, you know, all credit goes to Western Kentucky, and um, I just wish my teammates um, the best in the future. Considering uh, the context of the game and everything, Steve, did you uh, ever see these two collectively play as well to carry your team? I mean, with something like 11 minutes uh, left in the game, uh, they had a hand in, in virtually every point. No, they haven't, uh, they haven't dominated, at least from, uh, from our end, like they did tonight. Uh, I guess it's fitting that they end in that fashion, because they did. They made a, a, a great they made many, many big baskets and big plays defensively, and uh, I think that that memory will, will be there for a lot of folks for a long time, and uh, obviously we're very, we're very proud of them, disappointed that we're going to be losing them and they're going to be leaving us. But uh, what they did tonight uh, uh, was fitting for what they've done for Michigan for four years. Uh, Steve, Darius Hall hit all four of his free throws there in the second half and came up with 16 points and eight rebounds, and especially the, the rebound on the missed free throw there and, and hit the two free throws. How big a play do you think that was, and how big do you think Darius was in this game? They made some big plays, which winning teams do. You have to, you know, we have slogans and thoughts on our practice plan, and, and one of them leading into the tournament was find a way or make a way, and that's what Western Kentucky did tonight. They, 
Uh, when it looked like they couldn't find a way, they made a way, and they got some second chance points uh, uh, through aggression and, and effort and maybe a little bit of luck, but uh, you make your own luck, and Darius Hall uh, got two early fouls, and we talked about how he was going to come out in the second half a little fresh and, and play exceptionally hard, and he played not only hard, but he played very well. Any questions for the student athletes? Jimmy, I know you and Ray were talking to each other at, uh, at midcourt after the game. I was just wondering what you guys said to each other. Well, well you know, uh, I just told um, Ray, you know, we just, you know, we fought hard, um, played hard. Just had to keep our heads up and, uh, um, you know, look to the future now. So, um, you know, it's, I just wish them, you know, the luck and, you know, I, we always going to be, you know, friends and all that, keep in touch and, you know, all that. I just, you know, last time I was going to be on the court with, you know, um, a four-year teammate of Ray Jackson. Jimmy, Ray Maurice, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on a great year. Questions for Coach Fisher, please. Steve, with eight minutes to go, I think they had 45 points, and they had they scored 25 points in the in the last eight minutes of regulation. Can, can you pinpoint any defensive breakdown? Uh, they really started to get into a heavy attack mode off the dribble drive. And it started with Rogers, but it wasn't it wasn't just Rogers. Robinson did it also. And uh, earlier we had been able to to get to the midline and help from the, from off the ball, and we didn't do a very good job of that in that stretch. And um, you know we they got uh, five or six straight points, and then we traded baskets for a while, but we couldn't stop them. Whereas earlier uh, we found ways to. Uh, to not give them the penetration for, for dunks and layups, we made them shoot jump shots, and they weren't making all of them. When they made the run, they, they, were, getting, uh, they were getting dunks and, and layups, and uh, part of it was their aggressiveness. Maybe we were playing a little tired. Uh, we did not do a good job when it, when it was really needed down that stretch. Coach, a couple of uh, Big Ten teams lost today in overtime, but uh, what, what do you think of, your, of the league and... Uh, and uh, how they played? Well, neither Michigan nor Minnesota played well enough, and uh, um, I don't want to have six of us go out early and people say, "See, they 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 shouldn't all have have been in there." Uh, so I'm hoping that the other four will get on a run and win a few games, so we can we can say, "See, we've we've got uh, quantity and quality." Uh, we. We lost, we lost tonight in a game that, that we felt we should have won or could have won, and we didn't, and I'm sure Minnesota feels the same way. Steve, the beginning of uh, overtime, they got away for a couple of fast breaks on you. Can you pinpoint what was happening there? Uh, I'm trying to recall exactly, uh, and I know they got away from, for some. Uh, I don't know whether we were still deflated a little bit. We tried to talk about how and it's starting the overtime that we're going to come out uh, and, and be the aggressor, act, make them react. That was the theme and, and we didn't do that. It started from the opening tip where you could almost see it coming. Uh, we don't line up off the circle and we lined up off the circle and looked like we were trying to tip back and, and they read it and got it and got the first basket of the half and, and it was like we were uh, never able to, to get our feet set. We looked like we were spinning our wheels and, and we got a little frustrated and uh, missed some shots where we really had people attacking to the glass maybe too much and I think that led to some easy baskets the other way. So we have time for one more question for Coach Fisher right now. A reminder that the locker rooms are open after this press conference. Any more questions for Coach Fisher? 
Coach, thank you very much for your time, and congratulations on a okay. great season. In, in closing, uh, last four years, and I know the Western Kentucky guys are waiting to come on, uh, and I don't want to put pressure on them, but the, our last three years, we've lost to the team that won the national championship. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to wish them good luck and, and hope that we can say for four straight years that that happened. And I know they, they hope that that can happen. So Maddie Kilcullen's done a great job with that program and their kids are, are fighters. Uh, I know how proud he is of them and I will offer my congratulations publicly and then behind the curtain to them. Joining Coach Kill Cullen are Jeff Rogers and Chris Robinson. Uh, after a brief statement by Coach, please direct your questions to the student athletes first, then we'll let them uh, go downstairs and shower and get cleaned up, and then Coach will entertain any other further questions you have. Uh, Coach, congratulations on a great win. Thank you. First of all, I want to say top of the morning to you and happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> um, I thought it was a terrific basketball game. Um, Michigan is a class program from top to bottom, as evidenced by Coach Fisher's statements just before he left, and I want to thank him for putting the pressure on us. But um, this is a team, I, I think you saw why we've been successful again. We had uh, five guys in double figures, and I, I just thought that the start of overtime, we made some good defensive plays, and then we made great decisions. Uh, one, Michael to Darius in transition. Another one to Darius in transition. We got out quick, and I think the key was because they were sending four or five to the backboard, and we were able to get good rebounds and then attack up the court. And that was the key at the beginning of overtime. But I think the key to playing the game was when Jeff Rogers misses his uh, fall away jump shot on the left hand side, which is uh, his shot, but has the sense to find and the presence of mind to find Michael Frelix, who hits the three to send us in overtime. And uh, I think it, you give credit where credit is due. This team has found a way to win again. <laughs>